This video will show you how to use the Saved Tools and Recent Tools portion of the Tools panel in the Lightorama Sequence Editor. Uh, the Tools panel is this stuff on the left here, and in it you'll see Saved Tools and Recent Tools and Clipboards also. Clipboards is a topic for another video, or more likely another set of videos. So in this video we're really just going to deal with Saved Tools and Recent Tools. Now, to begin with, there's nothing in either of these sections, but that'll change momentarily. Let's say, for example, that we have this sequence, and we want to apply to some of it the Set Intensity tool. So we can click that button there, and set intensity by clicking and dragging in the sequence. Now, if you notice, that caused recent tools to gain this button here, this Intensity 50 button. If we switch to Fade Up, and apply that. Now fade up is here as well. Fade up 0 to 100. So we can switch between these tools by clicking on either of these buttons. For example, right now the fade up tool is selected, but if I click on the intensity 50 button, that's now the selected tool. So if I apply the tool, it's a set intensity, not a fade up. And you may have noticed that that also caused the intensity 50 button to move to the top of the list. So the top of the list is always the most recently used tool. And as it goes further down in the list, uh, that's uh, less and less recently used. So you can quickly switch between either one of them by just clicking on the appropriate button. And uh, that's great, but you may be thinking, well, I could also switch back and forth between them by using the toolbar buttons, the fade up button and the set intensity button. And that's true, but recent tools can come in handy when you're dealing with special tools. For example, I want a set intensity, but I don't want 50%. To do that, I have to open up the, this uh, intensity tool options dialog, and I'll select, for example, 30% and apply an Intensity 30 to this area. That causes Intensity 30 to go into the Recent Tools list. If I apply a 70 over here, now 70 is in the Recent Tools list as well. Similarly, I could apply a Fade Down from 50 to 0 over here, and that causes Fade Down 50 to 0 to be uh, in the Recent Tools list. Or a Fade Up 25 to 100, and now fade up 25 to 100 is here as well. So now this shows more of the power of the recent tools list. Instead of dealing with, you know, selecting the set intensity button and then opening up the set intensity dialog and then choosing the intensity that I want to use, instead of doing all of that, I could just select intensity 30. And there's an intensity 30. Or I could select intensity 70 and there are an intensity 70. Now it's also useful for example with custom tools. So to use a custom tool typically you turn on this button that enables these five buttons to its right. So for example we could make a custom shimmer fade up and we could make it fade up from 25 to 50 and there's a shimmer fade up from 25 to 50. And we could also make a shimmer fade up from 0 to 25. And that's fine using the custom tool and selecting which, of you, which you want of shimmer or twinkle and selecting which of these you want and then using the option dialog. But it might be easier just to use recent tools. Shimmer up 25 to 50. There you go. Shimmer up 0 to 25. There you go. So that's how the recent tools can be handy. Oh, and before I stop talking about it, I'll show you one more thing about it. You can also use it with color fades. So to use a color fade, you have to have an RGB channel or multiple RGB channels. Let's insert one into this sequence. There's our new RGB channel, and we can open up the color fade tool. So to begin with, by default, it has this red to green fade. We can just apply that to that section of the channel. And now red to green fade is in the recent tools list as well. We can select some other colors and maybe make it twinkle and apply that here. And now a blue to green twinkle 
is in the recent tools list. Or you can do other colors and shimmer, make that portion shimmer, and that's in the recent tools list as well. Now it looks to me like we have 10 entries in the recent tools list right now. So I want to show you what what is going to happen when I add an 11th. So check out the bottom one here, intensity 50. Now I'm going to add an 11th one in. Let's you know select some different color fade and apply it to the sequence. And that color fade appears in the list. But intensity 50 is now gone. It's been pushed off the bottom of the list because recent tools can only handle 10 tools at a time. So the tenth most recent one will get pushed off the list if you add an eleventh. So if you have some tool that you really like and you don't want to take the chance of it getting pushed off the end of the list just because you happen to use ten other tools since the last time you used this one, you can save it. For example, I like this Intensity 70. I'll right click on it and save tool. And now Intensity 70 is in the Save Tools list. And you could use the buttons up here just like you do uh, the buttons in the Recent Tools list. So there's an Intensity 70. Or if I save Shimmer up 25 to, uh, to 50 and select that guy, there's that. And I can switch back to Intensity 70 just like it, if it were in the Recent Tools list. The difference, of course, is that Save Tools are really saved. <laughs> so they're not going to be pushed off the end of the list. The only way they'll be moved off of the list is if you tell them to get off of the list. For example, I no longer want Intensity 70. I can right click on it and remove tool. And now that button is gone from the Save Tools list. You could also, of course, save color fades if you want to. There's no difference between uh, them and these non-color fades with respect to that. So I can select this color fade tool from the save tools list or select this one from the save tools list. Now I think that's about it for save tools and recent tools themselves but now let's also show you a little bit about the tools panel. First of all each of these three sections if they're too much for you uh, like for example you want the you want to see the clipboard section most of the time, but you don't really want to see these other sections. You can hide each of these individually, or you could also hide clipboards. And you could unhide them by clicking on that button again. That'll unhide them. If you don't want the tools panel at all um, taking up real estate here, but you want it available for use easily, you can unpin it, and that'll make it go away. And it's been replaced by this uh, tab to the left of my mouse pointer with the wrench icon on it. If you mouse over that tab, the tools panel pops back out. And then you can select one of the tools, let's say Intensity 30, and then go back here to apply the Intensity 30. And the, the tools panel has automatically hidden itself again. Um, so that's good if you want the tools panel available but don't want it taking up real estate most of the time. You can unpin it. If you don't want the tools panel at all, you d in other words you don't even want this wrench icon over here taking up space, you can go to the view menu and then uncheck tools panel and now the wrench icon is gone and the tools panel is gone entirely. The only way you can get it back or the only way it will come back that is, <laughs> is if you go to the view menu and check tools panel. Now it's back again. If it's in this state where it's uh, unpinned uh, and you want it pinned again, you can mouse over it and then click on the pin. And now it'll be there permanently unless you tell it to go away. So I think that's it for the saved tools, recent tools, and the tools panel itself. I hope this helps.